ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق تقبل الله منا ومنكم عيد مبارك علينا وعليكم تقبل الله منا ومنكم عيد مبارك علينا وعليكم تقبل الله منا ومنكم عيد مبارك علينا وعليكم ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فنك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم صدق الله مولانا العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي بحق حبيبنا وسيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله تعالى في القران المجيد مخبرا وآمرا قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم My dearly beloved Jamaat al-Muslimin Honorable elders, mothers and fathers brothers and sisters and beautiful children, as well as all our viewers on the social media of Facebook and uh, YouTube, etc. I greet you all with the universal greetings of love, of peace, and of mercy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we commence in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise be to Allah who is the creator, the nourisher, and the sustainer of the universe. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. As a Muslim, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah alone. And Allah has no partner whatsoever. Wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. And I bear witness that I believe in all the prophets. And I bear witness that Sayyidina Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the absolute final of all divine emissaries and prophets from Allah. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. We are in the holy and sacred month of Shawwal, which is the tenth month of the Islamic calendar. We have just gone through the very high, intense spiritual month of Ramadan in which Allah has prescribed fasting for us. Allah has revealed the glorious Quran in the month of Ramadan. And Allah has showered us with numerous blessings and divine favors in the glorious month of Ramadan. And the Ramadan came to a high point in ending in the first day of Shawwal which is the month of Shawwal and the first day of Eid. And so it's important for us to understand what is the greatness and the significance of this month of Shawwal that we are in. Does it mean that we have finished Ramadan and now we are back to our old selves? Does it mean that we don't have to maintain that momentum that was created in the glorious month of Ramadan and we are just back to our normal old selves. 
Let us understand that the month of Shawwal is a sacred month. And the, the word Shawwal comes from, from the original word Shala, which means to carry or breakage. It means to carry in terms of the fact that in ancient Arabia, in the pre-Islamic days, this was usually the times when the camels used to become pregnant. And we know that the camels were very, very, a very important commodity for the Arabs, especially at that time where there was no other transport. The best transport they had was the camel that Allah specially created for the environment of the desert. The camel can stay without water for days, carrying water in its hump. Allah created the camel specially, and Allah even makes special mention of that in the glorious Quran, where Allah says that, don't you see how I've created the camel? Don't you see, don't you observe how I've created the camel? Allah created this animal wonderfully. And so it was at this time of Shawwal, usually, that the camels, the she camels used to become pregnant, carrying their babies in the belly. That's where the name Shawwal comes from. The other meaning of Shawwal means breakage, which means there was this superstitious belief amongst the Arabs of those times that no marriage should take place in the month of Shawwal. Because they believe any marriage that took place in the month of Shawwal is destined to break up. It won't survive. And Islam came to abolish all and every form of superstition. So much so that the Prophet ﷺ himself showed us through his prophetic example by getting married to Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in the month of Shawwal. And Aisha radiallahu anha was also born in the month of Shawwal. And many years later, as a young lady, she, she got married to the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and she became one of our mothers, the mothers of the mu'mineen, the mothers of the believers. It is also reported that one of the other wives of the Prophet wasallam, by the name of Ummi Salma, Salama, the Prophet wasallam, got married to her also in the month of Shawwal. So if it was a bad omen to get married in Shawwal, then the Prophet himself would not have gotten married in this month of Shawwal, showing us that we must not have this superstitious belief that at a certain time, marriage is not right. At a certain time, this bad luck will happen to you. There is no place in Islam for superstition. Also, we can gauge by the fact that the second battle against Islam, the battle of Uhud, took place in this month of Shawwal. And Allah granted victory to the Prophet Sallallahu and the Muslim army in this month of Shawwal, which shows that if Shawwal was bad luck, Allah would not have sent down his divine help and his nusra and his divine aid. So no time and no place in Islam for any superstition whatsoever. Also note that the grandson of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu an, who was butchered and martyred on the plains of Karbala. Imam Hussein radiallahu an was born in the month of Shawwal. That is another factor to show the sacred nature of this month of Shawwal. Even our great Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi, whose kitab Sahih Bukhari is known as Asahul Kitab Ba'da Kitab Billah. The most authentic book after the authenticity of the glorious Quran is the book which was compiled by Sayyidina Imam Bukhari Rahmatullah And Imam Bukhari was born on a Friday in this month of Shawwal. So the sacred nature of this month of Shawwal can further be gauged by the fact 
that the first day of Shawwal, which was yesterday, the day of Eid, brought tremendous divine blessings and divine favor and divine forgiveness. So much so that on the first day of Shawwal, when Muslims flock towards the masjid or towards the Eidgah, Allah sent down special malaika that says, O oh, children of Adam, O oh, mankind, glad tidings to you. You are today receiving divine aid, divine mercy, and divine forgiveness of Allah. And after Salatul Eid was finished, they say, now you go home to your families, to your friends, wishing each other, enjoy the day of Eid, and you are returning now, washed clean by Allah through the special divine forgiveness that Allah sent down on the first day of Shawwal. Also, we can gauge it by the fact that Ja'alahullahu Fatihan li shuhuril hajj that this month ushers in and it is a key to the glorious months of hajj. This is the start of the period of hajj. Already now people can prepare for the hajj. Whosoever wants to go now and make tawaful qudum for hajj, they are most welcome to do so in total preparation for the hajj period. We know hajj is only the five days in dil hajj, dil hijjah, but this is the beginning, an opening, like a key that opens a door. Shawwal is the key that opened the door to the period and the moments of the holy hajj. What I want to emphasize and focus on it's a very specific hadith where the Prophet ﷺ mentions a special merit focused and limited to this month of Shawwal. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Man Sama Ramadan, O Muslims, whoever of you have completed your entire month of fasting in the glorious month of Ramadan, and you are now receiving this grand, sacred month of Shawwal. Then you fast any six days in this month of Shawwal. Allah, if you fast six days in this month, Allah will reward you and bless you like a person who fasted the entire year, or Allah will bless you like you have fasted your entire life. Allahu Akbar. Our, the ulama explained this on the basis of the ayah of the glorious Quran in Surah Al-An'am in verse 160, Allah Almighty says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Man ja'a bil hasana فَلَهُ عَشَرُ أَمْثَالِهَا Whosoever performs one good deed, Allah multiplies it for you ten times. And whoever commits a sin, you will only receive one punishment. This in itself shows the mercy of Allah. If we do a sin which we must try to abstain from, try to abstain from all sins, do not fall back on our old selves where we just commit sins knowingly and intentionally. But if a person sin, Allah will hold you responsible for only that one sin. But if you do one good deed, Allah bless you and reward you times ten. This is the mercy of Allah. So the ulama say, if you fasted the entire month of Ramadan, and Allah increase it for you by tenfold, which means one month times ten is ten. So if you fasted the whole month of Ramadan, Allah will reward you as if you fasted for ten months. And if you fast the six days of Shawwal, and you take six times ten, gives you sixty days, two months, so which means the Ramadan, and the six days 
add up the 12 months. That is why the Prophet Sallallahu say, you will be rewarded like a person who fasted an entire year. And if you continue to do that next Ramadan and next Ramadan and Shawwal, if Allah spare us and you die, Allah will consider you as a person who fasted your entire life. I'm asking you, Jamaat al-Muslimin, do we realize the mercy of Allah upon us? I'm asking you, do we realize the special grace that Allah has descended on us purely because we are the ummah of his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And therefore it is up to us. It is not easy to fast the six days of shawal because everyone around you is eating. And also it is not compulsory for you to fast. This is purely a test that Allah is putting us through. Are you going to follow the teachings which my Prophet encouraged you with? Are you going to follow the teachings of fasting any six days of shawal? There are people maybe who started the day already today, but you can't fast only on a Friday, it is makru. You have to follow it up with another day, Saturday, so. But unless you start today and you finish your whole six days. Or you can follow and fast any six days of this month. You can even fast every Monday and Thursday coming week, then again next week Monday and Thursday, and the third week again Monday and Thursday. And you can make one niyyah and say, Oh Allah, I make niyyah to fast the sunnah fast of Monday or of Thursday, including with it my fast for shawal, double shot. Allah give you double blessings, but you cannot, and I repeat, the majority of scholars say, you cannot say, oh Allah, that one day I missed in Ramadan and a day of shawal, I'm combining it because you can't combine the niya of a farald and a nafal together. So if you want to fast, fast your six days of shawal, either on a Monday or Thursday, or even you can fast on the three, three days, the 13th, 14th, and 15th, which is called a yamul bid, the white days of the month, and Allah will also reward you doubly for that intention. For the lady maybe who has a khayd, if she missed some days in Ramadan, it depends on how many days she missed. If she fear that she's not got enough days left to fast shawal only, the ulama encourage her by saying that fast your six days of shawal because the six days is limited to the month of shawal only. And if you have any days to pay back, you have right up till Sha'ban next year before Ramadan come to pay in those particular days. So there's no hardship in Islam. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Ad-Deenu Yusr, the Deen of Islam is very easy and it only becomes difficult for those who make it difficult upon themselves. So let us make it easy for ourselves and choose the days which is comfortable for us, the six days of Shawwal, any six days, not necessarily consecutively, any six days, fast those six days. We will never, ever be able to fast our entire life or for an entire year. But fasting the six days voluntarily, purely for the sake of Allah, Allah reward you as a person who fasted the whole year or fasted for your entire life. And so in conclusion, I first and foremost to myself and then to each and everyone, let us maintain the momentum of Ramadan that we have built up. The masjid was full to capacity, yet you found that it was Laylatul Qadr was hardly finished. For me personally, it felt like a light was switched off and suddenly the mosque became empty just like that. 
Suddenly people focused on one day, a mad rush taking place because everyone wants to have the best table for Eid. What about the remainder three days that left for Ramadan? The mosque was empty. Not realizing that Laylatul Qadr could have been on the 29th night and we were oblivious to this fact. Gone is that special atmosphere of love and harmony and mahabba and brotherhood and sisterhood that were built in Ramadan. Why do we allow ourselves to fall back into complacency? Do we have so short memories? It felt like the other day in 2019 and 2020 when the whole world was gripped in a global fear with the best of ammunition, the best of medicine, the best of doctors, the best of professors, we had no, no answer to COVID-19. People were dying all around us. Families and friends we have lost. Husbands passed away in the hospital. Wives are sick on the other side, not knowing who passed away. They only found out two, three weeks later that their partner passed on. How many children sitting here? And when I say children, even if you're 60 years old and your parents are alive, you are still the children of your parents. How many of us buried our parents? How many parents buried your children? The greatest hurt for a parent is to take the body of your child and lay it in the grave, having seen that child made his or her entry into the world. I personally was in the hospital with COVID, thinking I'm never going to come out alive, but I bargained with my Allah. I spoke with my Allah. I cried to my Allah. Oh Allah, give me another chance. I know deep in my heart, Allah, I'm not ready to come yet. Give me another chance, Allah. And here I'm standing again by the grace and the power of Almighty God, Allah. Have we forgotten so quick how this whole world was gripped in a fear and Allah showed us how helpless we are, how utterly helpless we are. Doctors fell down dead, nurses fell down dead, babies died, elderly and young people died, and death does not ask for age. If it was your time, you went, and if it is your time, you will go. And that's why Allah tells us in the glorious Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O oh, you who believe, if you have truly iman in Allah, and you truly believe that Allah put you here for a very short time, and very soon Allah is going to send His malakul maut to take my ruh and your ruh at any time which is not known to us. At that particular time, Allah says to us, La tulhikum amwalukum wa la auladukum an dhikrillah. Do not allow your money, your wealth, your business, your children, your family, do not allow anything to keep you away from the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah. Wa may yaf al dalika. Allah promises us by saying that whoever becomes guilty of any factor diverting you again uh, away from the remembrance of Allah, you will be of the losers. You will lose out, Allah say. You will definitely lose out. And at that moment, you are going to realize the importance of your sadaqah. You are going to realize the importance of your salah that many of us neglect. You are going to realize the importance of every opportunity of goodness that Allah has given us now 
Then we are going to say, as our Ruh is coming out, and we see the Malaika of death in front of us, we see Jannah, we see Jahannam, we, our eyes are open, our eyes are glassy, but we don't see really the people around us. Our families that stand around our bedside at the time of death, we don't really see them. We see the spiritual creation of Allah coming in. We possibly see the arwah and the souls of deceased family that is coming in to welcome you and to visit you for your last moment in this earth. And then you say, Rabbi, oh my Lord, Oh my Allah, Lola akhartani ila ajalin qareeb. Oh Allah, please give me respite. Give me just one moment longer, oh Allah. Just one moment longer for a sadaqa that I can give one sadaqa. Wa akum min salihin. And I promise you, Allah. Give me a little bit of time, I will become of the pious people, Allah. Lawla akhartani ila ajalin qareeb, fa'asaddaqa wa akum mina salihin. Walayyu akhir Allahu nafsan, ida jaa'a ajaluha. Allah say, I don't give respite to any soul. If your time is here, your time is here, not a minute or a second later or earlier. On that time, you will leave. Now is the time. Let us make maximum use of this month of Shawwal to fast the six days of Shawwal that Allah can count us amongst those people who have fasted for an entire year or for an entire lifetime. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we still experience as the ummah of the most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I ask any Muslim, any Muslim, is it your wish, is it your wish to be with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah? Is it your wish that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will wait for us at the pond of Kothar. Inna a'atayna kal Kothar. The pond of Kothar, the Prophet is going to stand. He's going to wait for us. He's going to take each and every one of us by the hand to lead us into the Jannah. Isn't that the yearning and the wish and the dua of every Muslim? If that is our wish, if that is our intense yearning in the very core of our being, then let us follow the wishes and the teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, may Allah guide us, and may Allah grant us ability to fast the six days of Ramadan for those who can. If you are sick and you need medication every day and you can't fast, please don't force yourself. Lift your hand and make dua for those who are fasting. And say to Allah, Allah, all those who fast, grant them the health and the strength to fast. If I had the health, Allah, I would have fasted. Allah will judge you and reward you according to your niya and your intention. Amen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Just a few announcements. Uh, there's a beautiful documentary movie which is taking place this coming Sunday at 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at Canal Walk this Sunday. And the title of that is Ahmad Alive. Ahmad is a young man who managed to find his way out of the battle of Gaza recently. And he made a documentary of the atrocities and the happenings in Gaza. There's still tickets available. They had to make a second show because the first show is totally sold out. So they're making a second show at 4.30 p.m. till 6.30 p.m. There's still some tickets left. Those who are interested, kindly find out how you can get those tickets, inshallah. It is on the website of Ahmad Alive. And uh, please go and see for yourself. 
the brutality that has taken place there in Gaza, but it will not cause us any despair. We still remain positive, and our dua is still that Allah must grant victory to the Mujahideen in Gaza, in Palestine, and all over the world. Can I hear everyone from your heart say, Amen? Amen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then we have been asked to make dua shifa for Haji Yusuf Mukaddam, also dua shifa for Widat Pangakar, and dua shifa for Rafiq Isak, the son of Haji Adam and Haji Sabira Isak, and also for Zinat Sharaf Peel, one of our people in a small town in Bethuli, near Bloemfontein, near the Kharib Dam, this community of Christians and Muslims, every Friday they witness our Jummah alive, and already some people have embraced Islam. They intend to come to Cape Town, and when they come, I will introduce them to the Jamaat, inshallah. And then also Dua Maghfira for Abu Salih Chatun, the uncle of Zubair from Mauritius, who is one of our people in the technical studio room with Shiraj Parker. We pray that Allah grant him and all deceased Jannatul Firdaus. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ali wa ashabi ajma'in wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحليم الغفور الودود الشكور مدبر الأمور وجابر المكسور الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور وعظم هذا الشهر حيث جعله فاتحا لشهور الحج المبرور أحمده سبحانه وتعالى على كل مقدور وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة تنجي قائلها من ظلمات القبور وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله الذي أقام منار الإسلام بعد الدثور صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأمتي صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم البعث والنشور وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فيا أيها الناس أشكر الله تعالى فالرابح من شكر فالسعيد من ذكر ولا يخيب من قصد وعظموه فإنه رحيم لا يعذب بالنار من عظم واتقوا يوما يؤخذ فيه بالنواص والأقدام ولا تقولوا ذهب رمضان فتستحل فعل الحرام فإنه يكره من عصاه في أي شهر كان واستقبلوا هذا الشهر الشوال بما يرضي الملك المنان قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تلكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاسرون وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول ربي لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكم من الصالحين ولن يؤخر الله نفسا إذا جاء أجلها والله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله مولانا العظيم وروى مسلم عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من صام رمضان ثم أدبعه ستة من شوال كان كسيام الدهر أو كما قال صدقت يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بارك الله لنا ولكم بالقرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فتوبوا إلى الله إنه كان غفارا اللهم صلي وسلي وزد وتوان ودفد وبارك بجلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك واشرف عبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد 
وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على سيد البشر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن خلفاء الراشدين ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعن بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين وتابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين أجمعين فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا واحفظنا يا الله يا الله من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم عد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين إلى أخوي المسجد الحرام ومسجد النبوي المدني الشريف آمين يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة. Please come forward and fill every gap. Heels on the line, shoulder to shoulder, please. Ladies upstairs also, make yourself straight. Heels on the line, shoulder to shoulder. There must be no gaps in between. Allahu <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب 
وإلى ربك فارغب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد لله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم وتواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ونسألك بذلك ونسألك توبة ومغفرة ويداية لنا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا مولانا فاغفر لنا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم رب الناس أذي بالبأس إشو أنت الشافي لا شفاء إلا شفاء شفاء لا يغادر سقما نسأل الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم أن يشمد المسلمين أجمعين خاصة المذكورين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا اغفر لنا ولأولادنا ولوالدينا ولأساتذتنا والجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء من الأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ويا قاضي الحاجات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمه واسكنهم في الجنة واجعل قبورهم روضة من رياض الجنان ولا تجعل قبورهم حفرة من حفر النيران برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين
تقبل الله منا ومنكم عيد مبارك علينا وعليكم تقبل الله منا ومنكم عيد مبارك علينا وعليكم تقبل الله منا ومنكم عيد مبارك علينا وعليكم Ooh mm-hmm.